and dolls I am super excited to bring you guys today's video I have been a little bit obsessed with the 1950s since I was in fifth grade I was in a play that was like half inspired by Greece and half inspired by back to the future where like 80s teenagers went back to the 50s and it was like about how rock and roll would never die if you also participated in that play when you were in school then we are like kindred spirits um Anyway, I've been obsessed with the 50s since then. It was around that time that I saw Grease for the first time and I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Actually, my favorite character is Rizzo, um, but Sandy is a little bit more fun in terms of her look at towards the end of the film. And I have always wanted to do a Sandy look. So here we go. And I, I'm really excited about this because like, I managed to use a lot of inexpensive products from the wig and the costume all the way down to the makeup. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. Please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Go and hit that little red button just smash it thanks dude I love you and uh, give me a thumbs up it really helps other people find my channel I appreciate it so much and let's go ahead and get started with this super fun 1950s bad girl tutorial okay guys so don't mind my natural hair right now because it is very greasy <laughs> at least I think I'm funny I'm gonna show you guys how to modify a Horrible wig into something that is a little bit more appropriate for your costume. So this is one that I picked up on uh, Amazon for I think about 11 bucks. California Costumes. It's their bad girl wig, which is very clearly meant to be Sandy from Greece. It's not a good quality wig, uh, but you know, you get what you pay for. I'm going to show you some steps that you can do to make a wig like this look a little bit nicer. Uh, I obviously don't have a, a, a wig cap on right now, but just to show you guys what we're working with, it's it's not cute. It's just, it's way too shiny. And that's just like kind of part of the course with the cheap wig is that it's going to be really, really shiny, which looks okay here in the daylight. But once we get outside, it's going to be like, ah! I first need to take down the shine. I'm going to be using um, some dry shampoo to just knock down the shine, make it a little less scary. And the color's a little off. Sandy's hair was a little more sandy colored. And this wig is a very pretty golden blonde, but what we're looking for is something just a little bit toned down. So I'm going to take some brown hair spray paint and do a very fine mist on it just to kind of knock the color down a pick or two. To start out my eyeshadow today, I'll be using the e.l.f. Mad for Matte palette. This isn't a bad palette. It's very inexpensive and it's quite compact. It has a mirror in it even, and it's got a nice variety of neutral colors for us to use. I'm using the very first color, the matte beige and I'll be sweeping that all across my lid from eyebrow to lash line. Next, I'm going to use the seventh color in the palette, which is a lovely gray brown on a Smith Cosmetics 253. And I'm gonna pack that on the outer portion of my lid. Depending on if you're right or left-handed, it might help to place the brush upside down when working on one side or the other. Like a lot of times I find it's easier to use the brush from up when I'm going from right to left. This is my right hand, it's my left eye. Probably the opposite of what you guys are seeing on camera. Whereas on this side, on my right side, sometimes it's like, it's just too close for comfort. It just feels a little funny. So if I go upside down to apply color, I think it works better for me sometimes. It just kind of depends on whatever feels right in the moment. Next, I'm going to take the black in the palette on the same brush. And I'm gonna apply it more or less in the same area. It's a little bit patchier than what I'd like a black eyeshadow to be, but it also blends out really nicely, which works pretty well for our purposes today. When I say this shadow is like silky and blendable, what I really mean is it's like dusty and chalky, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna work with it. Now I'm going to apply my primer. I've really been liking the Too Faced Hangover RX primer lately, so that's what I'm gonna use. Today for foundation, I'm using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in the color Nude Ivory. Not use regular concealer. I'm just using a little bit of my foundation underneath my eyes. Makes me look a little bit less makeup-y, and I think that that's important for this look. Like, you wouldn't want to contour when doing a 1950s, you know, styled grease makeup or anything. To keep this whole drugstore train rolling, I'm going to use some NYX HD powder to set my foundation. One thing that always kind of struck me as a little bit odd when watching Grease was that she was wearing 
kind of 50s makeup that's definitely inspired by the fact that the movie was made in the 70s. And so it's always been kind of anachronistic to me that she's like wearing bronzer and things like that, but we're gonna go with it. We're gonna do it. So I'm gonna use this really great bronzer from Makeup Geek for, called Sunkissed and a big fluffy brush from It Cosmetics. Tap off the extra because we don't want to get crazy. And I'm gonna use bronzer very similar to how we now use contour, but pulling it more onto the cheek. Like that. You got a bit on the nose as well. Sides of the face. And then just take whatever's left over and use it on the middle part of the face. Like the nose, the chin, the forehead. Another great product for pale skin chicas to add a little bit of glow and bronzerness to the face. This is the Cargo Bronzer in, um, it's the Picture Perfect Highlighter in Bronzer, or in Bronze. So this is technically a highlighter, but it does have a little hint of color to it. I'm going to use this where we would normally put highlight. You can see it's adding a bit more warmth to the face and a little bit of glow. So she's definitely glowing. Maybe a little bit sweaty from all that dancing around, but you know, it's cool. And then again, take whatever's left and just kind of wipe it kind of everywhere. See, glowing baby. Just got a fair amount of blush on and I'm going to use Spellbound from Makeup Geek for this. Same brush, we're just kind of layering our products on this one brush and on the face as well. And we're applying it in a very similar kind of pattern, just layering each new thing up on top of the other. So we did bronzer, highlight, and now blush. And again, a little on the tip of the nose. Over here, it is uh, just, you know, color, warmth, etc. Really helps also because I'm going to be platinum blonde today and that can wash you out if you don't add enough color to your face. To finish up the eyes, I'm just going to take a little bit of the gray brown shadow that we used earlier and use that to smoke out my lower lash line. right there and originally thought I would wear false lashes but I don't think it needs it I think that this look is actually better kept a little bit simple so I'm going to just use some black mascara and plenty of it shall we paint the lips red now I'm going to be using a Milani lip liner in true red it's a nice bright vibrant red and I'm going to fill in my lips so here we go So just filling the entire lip with this pencil. It's a great cherry red color. It's quite beautiful. I'm gonna put a gloss on top of this, but I'm gonna wait to do that until I have the wig on and everything. Just about there, the last thing I wanna show you guys is how I paint my natural hair a blondish type color to kind of blend in with the wig. Because my hair is clearly purple and part of it's gonna show once I put the wig on. So what I do is I'm taking some face paint. This is from Wolf Cosmetics. This is the Skins palette. So it's got all these kind of natural type of colors. I'm gonna be using this one right here, which is sort of a golden skin tone shade to make my hair look like it's golden blonde. So, as I showed in previous videos, this is a water activated paint, so you get your paintbrush, you dip it in, then you mix it right in the palette, just like watercolor paint. And then you paint your hair. And I'm personally super impressed with how well this works. Covers it up, looks fairly natural. You can even take your finger and blend it in a little bit, almost like a hair concealer. And the best part about this paint is it's water activated. So when you get in the shower, it's going to wash right out. You don't even necessarily have to shampoo your hair. You just have to rinse it. Although I'd probably recommend washing your hair, but still. For good measure, I will also paint around the top of my hairline here. Just in case a little bit of that peeks out. And one last little quick thing, a little eye-opening trick that I know is to take a little bit of um, face paint or eyeliner or whatever that's either white or flesh colored. And... Draw it where you would normally put a wing liner. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just that little bit is gonna make your eye look more open from afar. It's a really great trick. It's an alternative to doing a winged liner if you have hooded eyes, or if you just don't have time to sit there and fiddle with a winged liner, which I don't today. Um, I don't feel like it. It's gonna give me that wide open eye look and give me a little bit of a lifted look without actually having to do a wing. Just a little tip from me to you. 
The next is my Wretched Wig. Now, I've already shown you guys how I adjusted it. I want to show you guys how how successful it was actually changing the color. It gives it a really great um, sort of naturalistic sandy blonde color. When I put this wig on as it was intended, which is with this front part being the bang, it looks terrible. It's just like really like blown back. Whereas Sandy's hair was sort of swept up from one side. So what I'm going to do is take the part that should be the front bang part and apply it here. That way we have this upswept side, which is more similar to Sandy's hair on this side. It's a little bit uneven, but I kind of like it. Pull some of that blonde curls down like that. Oh, girl, how you doing? Yes, queen. I like pulling this little curl sort of around my ear area. Take a wig comb to sort of brush the hair in place, because if you use a regular brush, it doesn't quite work the same way. Whereas this, the little um, bristles like turn around and around, so they're not going to snag the hair. Comb that back. And because this has so much hair, like hair color spray and the dry shampoo, it actually sets pretty well kind of wherever you put it. And then comb some of these curls forward. My bad girl hoops on. Okay, and so now I have all my costume elements on. I can do the final bit, which is a bit of lip gloss from Milani. This is Red My Lips. Her lips are hella glossy. Tell me about it, stud. And one last final makeup piece is to take a little bit of the face paint that we use to blonde out my hair on the brows as well. And then add a little peek to the brows with your blonde brow pencil. The outfit itself is something that you can use separate. So you can use just a black off the shoulder top and some black jeans or some disco pants or shiny leggings. I have this really great jumpsuit that I picked up off Forever 21. So it's sort of all one piece. It makes it very easy, but I will try to find some alternatives and have them linked in the description bar down below for you in straight sizes and plus sizes. So be sure to check that out down there. The belt I picked up on Amazon, you can get that in a pretty wide size range. And then I borrowed this leather jacket from my best friend. The shoes, I didn't feel like buying red mules that I didn't think I'd really wear again so I decided to just wear a pair of leopard print strappy shoes that are a little more modern but honestly I think they go with a look amazing and nothing says 1950s bad girl like leopard print am I right I think so so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video I had so much fun creating this for you please leave me some love in the comment section down below give me a thumbs up it really helps other people find my channel and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and if you're really into my videos please hit notifications there's this new thing called community where I can actually interact with you guys on days when I'm not uploading a video so I can just be like hey you know in case you missed this video or just some more information or behind the scenes and stuff like that so I want to start doing that with you guys here and that's it thank you guys so much for watching I might be vintage or tacky but be your own kind of beautiful see you bye tell me about it stud